All right, so in the emphasis of time, automated bar screens repaired, waste pump clarifiers repaired, fat tank contents, remember that's where it's solidified. We just about finished that up. Still looks like crap over there, but that's because we've got everything in the way. Treatment numbers are well within permit finally. To include the um, ammonia. The ammonia? Yeah. Okay. So we've had that under control for about two weeks now. Uh, you know, it still worries me. So we think that we know who dumped on us, but we can't prove it. But we have uh, visited all our industrial users and reminded them, we actually gave them copies of our sewer use ordinance and our pre-treatment ordinance. And uh, now we're randomly dropping in and wanting to see your bill laden for disposal and that sort of thing. You know, I couldn't, if you put a gun to my head, I couldn't swear, but we're pretty confident we know who the guilty party was. And, you know, we're just never going to be able to prove it. That's what it boils down to. So, Lucy, now you're watching. Huh? Well, it's worse, you know, it's actually, uh, it actually aligns itself with what we were able to evaluate when we did the chemical analysis. And uh, it wouldn't take much for them to disrupt us to the extent they did. You know, some things, uh, depending on what you're discharging, uh, you know, through dilution alone, not a problem. Well, this particular, what they discharge, not what they discharge on us, what they're supposed to hold and get rid of could have been the nightmare for us. So anyway, we'll bear that in mind. Uh, water tanks. So you heard me talking to them about yearly maintenance. So, uh, so there's two things: the exterior and interior. Uh, that's a guideline. I think EPD says clean your tanks every seven years. We do it every five. And uh, last time we did it was uh, I think just before the uh, virus came in and. Uh, actually probably got a video on anyway you may have heard me say uh the way you pay is for the amount of sediment at the bottom of the tank up to three inches one price anything over three inches is another and when we did it i think we got an inch and a quarter out of the bottom of it well then i reminded everybody that this past christmas we drained all the tanks and uh we didn't have any sediment so uh that doesn't mean we won't keep them in repetition to do but the exterior of the tank Buddy. Thank you. Now are we talking about both tanks or just Chattahoochee? So there's a big difference. I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to go there. So the Chattahoochee tank is your problem child. The county line tank, you'd say, well, now wait a minute. Didn't somebody just shut a hole in that? Nobody will work on that on the, on the county line tank because it's a glass line tank. So there's only a certain number of companies, and they're very select, who will work on that. So the people who work on these elevated steel won't work on the other, and there's little you can do to them. The example is on the interior of what we call a bowl, which is what we have up here, the elevated tank. That's all, that steel's all coated. Uh, and that coating will wear out over time, depends on your makeup of your water and that sort of thing. Whereas the uh, county line tank, glass line steel, it never deteriorates. So, uh, you know, there's not a lot of profit. So outside of somebody shooting it, you just have exterior maintenance to take care of. Yep. As okay. we've had, uh, we've had bolts go bad and what have you, that, but same thing, there's only a select few companies that you can even get, and they do all the work underwater. So, I mean, that's kind of cool. And now you've seen that more with uh, the bowl tanks now. But so every year I'm inundated with somebody that wants to put you under contract. And I'm going to tell you for uh, the bigger you get, the more likely you might want to do that. You, you're going to pay, I'm guessing right now, I used to say $80,000 to clean and paint that tank up there. So you got to sandblast it. And then you have to recode it, and the paints have come so far nowadays that they electrify everything and makes a better bond and all this kind of stuff. I have no idea. This particular company, which will go unnamed because y'all may want to go down there, 
would have a, an agreement for eight years that would cost you $247,391. You probably heard all this already. Ends up being $2.14 per month for per customer or just the Chattahoochee tank. And that's a lot more so than we can probably do it ourselves if we stay on the program. You've got to maintain it. We're past due cleaning that right now. I'm going to show you what we call it. I'm confused about you said we're past due. You said it was just done the before the pandemic. I'm talking about the interior. Interior is what we worry about. The exterior, not pretty, but it hasn't been done as well. But what was done in 2020 around the pandemic? The interior. But that's the one that should be done every five years, right? Mm -hmm. So that one's not doing for another two years. Right. Okay. And even then, we might even consider that. All right. These are called enhanced pictures. So enhanced means you go out there and you look at this tank and you hold that picture up, you're going to say, not the same thing. That shows your defects right now. But obviously, if you were standing there in daylight right now, that's not the way it looks. So do you understand what I'm saying? That has a special filter, filter. on it that draws that out. Oh, oh okay. I got, got you. Me? Yep, yep. You won't see that with the naked eye. Nee. Nee, nee. But there's an example of one. That, those are the rust, rust points you ought to be worried about. So this is an algae that grows on there. Again, not visible or that is visible? Oh yeah, you'll see some of that, but not to the extent, same thing, filter on that. You just won't see it. So, you know, how much do I get? Here's an example. This enhances, all I do is put a green filter on it so that just draws it out that much more. But that's two different type of algae right there. Anyway, what does this tell you? It tells you that the tank exterior, if you look at it now, it needs to be clean. If you look at it, the under carriage on the bowl and what have you, it needs to be taken care of. So this company that would want me to tell you that if you sign an agreement with them for the next eight years, which would be a total of $249,000, that they will ensure any maintenance that has to be done on that tank. But structurally, you name it. So this is kind of an insurance policy as well. I'm not a big fan of it. If you'll do the, your job to begin with, I was going to show you there's a deal up here, the catwalks. Let me see if I can find This is that. the one that would be 200, 200, yeah. $2.14. Yeah. Yes, right. This of course, that's that 200 and some odd thousand. That's payable over the course yeah. of eight years. Yeah. Or 30, do you pay them that So you pay about 38,000 years, one through five, and you pay uh, six, seven, eight, about 15,000. Okay. So they're going to get their bulk of their money up front because they're going to do the bulk of the work up front. Mm -hmm. And there would actually be a schedule. That's the catwalk up there up top. And that's something structurally you'd want to be worried about. And uh, I've been up there. Not going anymore either. Shoulder wouldn't take me up that far. Somebody's going to have to lift me up there. But point being is, that's the type of thing that structurally, that's always going to show the wear and tear. Does that make sense? So... Anyway, that would be something that, you know, I, if I didn't tell you this is kind of a warranty for eight years, uh, you know, I'd be failing to give you the whole picture boils down to. So, now aside from this and what they're offering, just the exterior, how often, or when's the last time we did the exterior? It's never been painted since the day it was erected. And how old is it? It's 12, 13 years old. Okay, so 13 years old, so in 13 years, it's in the condition that it's in. Um, what's, you were talking about, like, the difference in paint and how paint's Yeah, down. so that's really advanced over the last I mean, seven or eight years. Is the years. paint going to keep that algae from growing? Yes, it has a determinant. Okay. Um, that doesn't mean you're not going to have to clean every once in a while. It just means it's going to, well, one example I'd give you is if you still got to clean it, you want most of them bleed out, bleach out like tanks. You know, they bleach out and that's the problem. So you wouldn't have to sandblast it, is my point. You could just hose it down, hose it, pressure wash. Like pressure wash, right. right. That's pressure what I'm saying. Wash. You wouldn't have to repaint it. Right. You would just pressure wash right. it. 
but um, they would provide that service. This company would do all that. They so do they everything and anything. everything. Right. They paint, you know, matter of fact, they have a schedule at the so you get it painted within the first two years and then somewhere between year seven and eight they would paint it again according to their schedule they so it'd be painted again? twice for yes. that amount yep and uh you know again i'm not an advocate but i'm being fair to them it would be clean twice during that same eight year period interior so it'd be painted twice and clean twice right. interior right how many times would it be pressure washed during that only one period? only each time they went to paint it'd be sandblasted the first time pressure washed it the second time if they had to repaint if they had to repaint the only change would be to cost is if you chose you know there's a logo on it right now if you chose to change that logo you would pay the upgrade for the logo change otherwise we pay nearly half of that and just have somebody be one and done with it and then start setting money aside for the next time it's going to need to be done. Yeah, nobody ever does that. Just being fruitful. Is there any competition? Are there monopolies? Oh, yeah. No, no. There's there's four or five. The thing I worry about them is, uh, you know, they get a premium. I mean, there's no doubt, but they're also experienced at it. You don't want some jackleg come in here because sandblast is all on. As high as that tank is, it makes a mess. And that's hard to control, you know. You don't want to work Never. on a windy day on sandblasting. Nor do you, the paint adhere, adhesion isn't the problem anymore because they electrify the tank, so it sprays on it stays. But, uh, you know, I always worry about, like, uh, comp this particular company. I said, now, how long have you been in business? Well, in 1982, and I said, no, how long under the current name? Because they, about some probably 10 years ago, they all started buying everybody up. So the same company wasn't the company you dealt with previously. So I know this company's been in business since 2002. Claremont got their tank done. What is that? King Drive, right off of King Drive in Claremont. So that's Halls County's tank. That's actually owned by the city of Gainesville. Yeah. So they're on a maintenance program. Okay. I was just going to say if there's any way we can find out who did it, what the condition. Oh no, 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 we can from yeah. from the last. I, think, I want to say it was done probably six, seven years ago yep. is when it was done. I'd like to know what the condition of it is today and whether or not they feel that what they did was was worth it or if they got ripped off. Oh, yeah, we'll find that. Well, whoever we do business with, I mean, we if y'all want to go down this road, we put this out for a bit. So we'll have comparisons. Like this company, uh, you know, I think they do Alto, Demarest, uh, they may do Cornelia. I mean, so it'd be easy to reference all of them. My, my first initial, I don't know about you guys, my first initial is, is that's way high. Oh, but, I told but in you. the same sense, you know, I think about a, a different, completely different analogy. When my mother-in-law bought her car, uh, she had the opportunity to buy uh, a maintenance plan with it. And I said, if you can afford to get it, get it, because you don't ever have to worry about maintenance costs that are unexpected. If something goes wrong, you have the warranty and your maintenance plan that covers everything, and you have now budgeted, and you don't ever have to worry about, you know, having to fix something, unse you know, that you, it's unforeseen. However, to be able to do it for half the price, our own for you know you said a hundred thousand which i still think is ridiculously expensive but um well i don't know what the market is right now i mean there's the problem so we just have to see the same thing if you want to go that route we put that out a bit and you know it's we're not gonna let any jack lid somebody's gonna come in here that's proven you know same thing what we call qualifying bids they're going to be qualified i think we need to get prices both ways just to see mm -hmm. So how often do you think, or if the paint would last 20 years, how often would it need to be cleaned in that 20 years? I say every 10 years at a minimum, don't you? So it, it'd be cleaned and repainted every 10 years. Well, the, the advancement they've made with the paint, they say that you can get 20 years out of it now. Which means they don't have to pressure wash it. Well, they would have to pressure wash it, it won't fade out. 
it won't bleach out is what it boils down to. So the point is the paint would adhere instead of bleaching out, you know, like you can rub against that paint up there right now. It's oxidized. It'll, yeah, it'll yeah. come off your hands, so this won't happen. Right, which means that you should just be able to pressure wash it to right. clean it. Mm -hmm. Right. It which shouldn't have to be repainted. Yeah. Right. But you're saying they're going to repaint it. That's what they'd schedule. Why would you need to repaint it if I'm it doesn't need to be what they'd schedule. Well, <laughs> they'd probably that's discount. probably what they've got it budgeted in there is for another paint yeah. once. Right. Unless they're not using the kind of paint that would and not they may be. not. Yeah. Right. I mean, you, you get what you pay for. You want a fire red Cadillac, but it's going to be more than that black one is. But same thing. Do we want to price it both ways? I think so. I, I think it would be so. We had to, to put that. one out for bid. Uh, well, so let me tell you how the law works. You can't propose something you're not going to do. Does that make any sense mm -hmm. in government? Isn't that a rotten? Thing? So I, I can put out some scenarios for. Uh, I'll have Brian do all this uh, for a bid package and help companies that are out there develop it so we'll understand it's all about square footage that's really what it is what does it cost to clean it sandblast it and uh you know plus if we have any metal fatigue or anything like that they'll have to that'll be part of it but long story short is until you actually put out for bid and are committed to go forward with it you really can't put this out on the street does that make sense to y'all? Mm -hmm. Like this guy, I didn't have a problem with him giving me a price. I thought it was ridiculous, but I didn't have a problem with him giving me because he's doing half the homework for me. Yeah, I like the idea of it. I just, I'm, the price of it to me is Yeah, $2.14 per customer. Doesn't sound like a lot until you add it all up. Anyway. Yeah, that's all right. right. Let's see what we can do with that because that'll be part of our budget for this next year. What we should do. All right. Um, <clears throat> You weren't here. We talked about the current meter inventory, you know, $245 a piece. The company that we are talking to, same thing, uh, about the advancement of the meters and what have you, would like to come in here and, uh, you know, showboat you, which is fine. But we need to look at more than one company if we're going to change. The question is, do we want to change? I think it's prudent. Well, your company that you have now will eventually advance to that. This company and others are already there. There's the problem. So, you know, uh, Delta Neptune meters is what we use. But, you know, there goes the stability of the marketplace. They've been in business for a long time. All these other companies, I mean, if you look at the meter now, it's just a chunk of electronics. That's all it is now. When Neptune made their first meter, all mechanical. They've been in business the whole time. So, you know, just remember, I think you ought to look at everybody in the equation and understand, you know, the cost for change out, obviously. But, uh, you know, we're going to stay with what we have until we get some folks in the room that you all feel comfortable about. Okay? Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. so, so you're saying that get them out here to talk to us about it. Well, I don't want to get them out here yet. Are you ready to pay $365 per meter? There's your problem. Yeah. I, in other words, do I, do I think we need to line up? When we go to Savannah, there'll be a Badger meter company will be down there in Neptune. We talk to all those people within the next 12 months. We ought to make a decision what we're going to do. But let's get them in the room and understand it because that's a big change out, $365 versus what we're paying right now at 245. Mm -hmm. So, you know. And we have to do all the meters when we do that, correct? Yeah, and now there's also an advantage. I mean, there's some advantages to you borrow money from GFOOT and if you'll ch do a 100% change out, they'll actually, you. there's grant money you can get out there if you'll do a cost. So they want the efficiency of it. Now, the disadvantage is we already are efficient because we're already swapping out our meters. So, but there's communities out there, they got meters been in the ground 30, 40 years, and that's why they, they, it's more likely they would be successful and get the grant than we could. We could get a low interest loan on it, no doubt. But just bear that in mind. All right, the other thing is uh, water meter for Athens Street. Interesting, I have a gentleman that wants a water meter for 
his little shop that he has. They subdivided a piece of property on Athens Street out by you, Joe. I know who it is. And uh, he wants a water meter. And I said, well, how do you dispose of your waste if you got a septic? He says, no. And, I, you know, I'm just making sure y'all are cool with this. I'm going to put a porter potty out there. Nobody's ever out there. Sometimes I wash a car and that sort of thing. But I'm careful because next thing you know, that thing will develop into something else. So he's not tied on. The house is tied on the sewer, but his little shop isn't. And the reason he wants, he's been getting his water from the house that was subdivided, but now he's selling that. The, his friend is selling that property, so he doesn't house, think he'll get free water anymore. House. And I, you know, I just want to let y'all know it's mm. kind of an awkward position for us to be in. Do you water your garden on seawater? Well, no. seawater. Sea oh, well, your well water. That's what. That's what. You well, do. like I said to somebody earlier today, if it was a goat farm, I'd give it to him tomorrow. Just letting you know. So this one. We got his check. The what the well is? Is it? Yeah. All right, here's, here's a good one for y'all. So we have chemical feed pumps at each of our wells. We have at least two uh, at each location. And this is what we've done in replacement. So we track all this. So we have two different types of pumps. They're similar pumps. They're two different type of heads. So one's chlorine, one's fluoride. And what I wanted to keep going is we keep a new uh, backup pump of each on the shelf, brand spanking new. We also have a rebuild kit for every one of them uh, that goes bad. So right now we're down to, we don't have any brand new ones sitting on the shelf. We've got two rebuilt sets. So to replace them, it'd be $1,800. That includes the... Uh, we'd have two brand new pumps, one one chlorine and one uh, fluoride pump, and then two rebuild kits. So the 1800 is for two, not each. Yeah, yeah it's $1,800 total. It's more than I anticipated spending this year. But you don't, when they go bad, you replace them and you figure. <clears throat> I just don't feel good. Well, not especially having. with supply chain issues. And well, that's my deal right now. Would this be an amendment to the budget? Probably not. Okay. I just steal from one line item to another. another. But it's not something I anticipated. Right. But my rule is so that if we get another one goes bad, same thing. We're going to come back and say 750 that. bucks. We're going to eat it and go. Yeah. You just don't want to find yourself. I don't want them coming back saying, well, we tried a little duct tape and then we walked, you know, right. I don't want to hear any of it. I want to hear, we fixed it, we replaced it, it's all done. But I was surprised when I went back and looked about, you know, I thought our replacement was higher than what it was. But if you want to be, as an example, I'm paying $750 for a pump now and they were 685 Too bad back in 2020. Really not that bad. But I just want to make y'all aware of it. SCADA, so I've been telling y'all, we've got to look at the SCADA system for replacement. And you know, it's very selective. Tony's going to help us out if he can find some folks that could do similar, but it's all based on water and sewer and what our capabilities are. Uh, one of the companies I talked to uh, last week uh, you know, because it's kind of a selective industry. In other words, you know, it's a specialty field. Um, they felt like they'd come out in prices. Here's the problem. If we're talking about supply chain, if you told them tomorrow to go start it up, you're six months before they can get all the components to do it with. And then uh, this other company that had, I don't think much of them service-wise, but they said initially, I may have already told you all this, that you would have to agree to pass six months if they didn't get all the components in. You agreed to an automatic two, three, or four percent increase until they received the product because they were getting stuck out there with not knowing. Well, we can't even get that company to return a phone call. I mean, I talked to Brian about it today because he knows them. Anyway, we got to get this going. That's what it boils down to. The, just remember the system we have on Skater right now 
you know, it's all computer based. Well, don't confuse what I'm fixing to say with Microsoft Outlook, but it's called an Outlook system too. That's just what they called it 20 years ago when they developed it before Microsoft ever came in. That system has not been updated in four years. So in other words, there hadn't been any change into the programming in the last four years. That's not a good position to be in. So it's not supported is the word you're gonna hear all the time. You know, we no longer support Microsoft 7 or whatever it was, 8 or, you know, we're up to 12 or 14 now. So anyway, bear that in mind. Anything for me? Yeah, we just put the sewer system. No, that's everything. That would be water, sewer, you name it. They're all the pump stations, water tanks, everything. Because it's all tied in. So, and I gave Tony an example at the waste treatment plant. The good news is what we did uh, and what the PLCs we put in when we saw the plants. So PLCs are preferred logic control. So the good news is they're plug and play. And uh, when I say that, in other words, we could go out tomorrow and put in a new PLC from a, one of these new companies that can match this up and it'll work automatically. Otherwise, you have to program in 1,400 data streams into that PLC. Now, I didn't make it sound, I made it sound too easy, but it would take us a day to change over the PLC that we've got right now versus taking weeks to make sure every signal works. Yeah, all of those data points is, is what the time consuming part is, so. Yep, um, so the good news is, is uh, you know, what we've got in there now, fortunately, is upgradable. So that's, so we did something right some 13 years ago, but that, I mean, it's, it's a nightmare for me. It really is. Because it's a one man band and we're dependent on him and not a good position to be in. So are we just waiting on pricing? pricing? Yep. Okay. But I'm going to tell you, it's not going to be cheap and it'll be something that, I'm thinking it's over $200,000, but it should be something that will last you another 10 or 15 years. And the data will be far better than what we get right now. Well, we've just, in the last three years, we changed over where we're getting cellular data so we can draw more information. But the example is like from a pump station, it'd tell you where the generator's run, tell you where the pump's on. The new one would tell you the run times, uh, the amount of flow volume, the chemical feed. Uh, the example is we're on three phase. Tell you if you're having single phase, two phase, or phase failure. I mean, it'll tell you a lot more about it in just that data stream. But right now, we may get four signals from everything, and that's it. It's on, it's off, it's not working. We had a pump seal fail, that sort of thing. If you go down and you look at the boards, uh, next time I have y'all out to the waste treatment plant, I'll show you each one of those boards that have a nice little red light or a green light on it. That's part of that data stream. It's more complicated than what I've just described, but that's the simplest way to look. Well, new SCADA system would give us all that data like we were standing in front of it. That's what it boils down to. So what y'all got for me? Yes, I've been getting emails and I know they're advertisements, so I'm let's see. This GovGov, is that something that you get them too, huh? Yeah. yeah. I thought just maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so this GovGov, is that something that would be beneficial that would send out if I'm reading this stuff correct, it would so allow us to do the text message. Is. So we are going to uh, tech my gov. We actually have already contracted with them. Actually, okay. so text my gov. Uh, uh, actually, Doug's putting it together. So that's what going to be one way communication. We can send out text messages. Right now, we won't receive text messages. Okay. So. This, I think this is the same company. I was just trying to see who they are. No, that's out of New York. So it's not the same company. But uh, 
that should be up and running. The problem with that is it's not a problem. It's like everything else. It's another means of communicating with everybody. But if you don't give us permission to text you, we can't put you in the system. And then you I'm have assuming this is like for uh, boil. Boil. Exactly. Right. Okay, yeah. yeah. Right. What we don't want to do is we don't want to abuse it. What When we were setting this all up years ago, uh, the idea was, is we do want to be on alert status only. You know, if we have bad weather coming in or something like that, we can just hit one button and it'll send the text messaging out. Boil water is a good example of that. Uh, and we might utilize it to promote some issues. It won't be that, don't forget, we meet the third Monday of every month at seven o'clock. Cause right. we don't want, we want people to pay attention to it when they get the text. Right. <laughs> now we might promote this weekend's fall festival, this, but it won't be 10 of them. It'll be once, once. Right. you know, we might actually even send out Merry Christmas. Well, that way when they get something, they know they need to. Yeah, we want them to look at like, you know, oh, they send crap all you know. the time. I could, we can all show up our phones and say, yeah, right. I get that crap every other week. That's honestly, I'll tell you just from a, a human standpoint, when I was at the hospital, uh, Metasys is the automated system that um, that runs our HVAC, our fire pumps, our mm -hmm. uh, just a lot of stuff. And whoever set it up, they set it up so that every single mm -hmm. little bitty insignificant mm -hmm. uh fault <laughs> came, came to us and it's like when when something and, and like when you're holding the phone ding, 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 it's ding. every five minutes it the text is going off and finally you just ignore it mm -hmm. well one day i was um on my on weekend uh, my weekend shift like every whatever every weeks i get a call from one of the managers like hey did you not see this alert I said what alert, Tommy? I said, I probably get 50 of them an hour. He goes, um, your your supply pump is off. We got three pumps. None of the redundancies kicked on. So when you have something that's constantly sending you a I bunch get, of... We get it all the time. It's it's ridiculous. Ours, it, we've narrowed it down, but like at 10.01 on Wednesday, I get 22 uh, text messages, alarms. Because our tank, our plant goes offline and runs under generator. When it does, it trips everything. And what happens is, like you said, you have to worry about. Okay, it was at ten o'clock because I can ignore every damn one. Of them. Now I get a test message, test message, every day at noon. I never have to worry about what time it is. It's noon, but it is a pain in the ass. I mean, and you 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 begin to lose, like you just said. You don't lose faith in it. Yeah. Right. But it's better. Ours is much better than it was. We'll just put that one. So yeah, to not to not take advantage of that and, yeah. and leave it as uh, an alert system for So we hope to begin promoting that next month to register your telephone number with us. But we've got to have a written agreement from everybody. It does two things. It says we have the right to use it. We won't sell it. That I don't have to worry about but also gives them the right to cancel it. So we got to get yeah. the spreadsheets all set up and that should be, I think we're pretty close actually, but we'll see. All right, what else you got? That's all I got. Good. Joe, you got anything? Amen. How many more meetings we got? Two. Two. Shit. You got uh, Musical chairs. Zoning.